and get in here on the logo there. Of Tylum 502 produce paints, weathering materials, publications, tools, um, accessory materials, and so forth. And what I wanted to do was basically give you an overview of what these products are. And they are basically used up. Tylum means, in German, means battalion or department or office. And I think they use that to designate that you use it for military models. So Abteilung or Battalion 502. And what they produce is they produce different types of paint and weathering materials. Uh, and I put some of them out here on the wall. And Anne will come in here and look at these things. We'll start out over, let's start on this side. They make two different types of paint. They make oil paint and they make acrylic paints. And they just started making their acrylic paints recently. The oil paints come in sets, and you can see here I have an aircraft effect set, that's a weathering set. I have a fantasy and sci-fi color set, a weathering set. And these are oil paints. And when you come over here and you see this one, this is a flesh color set. This is oil paint that's designed to paint figures. So you have weathering and you have figure painting. And if we pan up here a little bit, they also produce pigments. Pigments are used for weathering. It's basically the powder that a paint's made from, and you mix it with different types of mediums, like this guy here, the thinner, and you put it on your models to create dust and mud and so forth. And then the, the products that have come out recently are these acrylic paints, and these are basically geared toward figure painting. You have a flesh and a skin color set here, and it's acrylic, so it mixes down with water or acrylic mediums. I have black and white down here. They make red, yellows, and these are set up so that you have all the different shading colors in a box. In other words, I start with a base white, and then they give you the dark shades and highlight colors and things of that nature. So you can buy a set of paint and have all the paints you need to do the shading, highlights, and base colors um, on a figure, let's say. They also produce books, publications, and magazines. Some of you might be familiar with Damage. That's Weathered and Worn Models magazine. You can see we've got a Star Wars issue here that has the land speeder on the front. And basically these publications show you how to use their materials and other manufacturers' materials to create weathered and worn finishes on spaceships, um, depending on the issue. It can be aircraft, can be armor, can be space. This one's a space-oriented issue. They make a lot of publications that deal with historic research. This is a nice book on German colors, or Tarnfarben, which are tank colors. And if you open the book up, you'll notice that it's full of really great profiles and color photos of German armor. And this one, I believe, is late war armor. So if you buy a Panzer IV and you want to check out how to paint the pattern on it, this has lots of great information, color plates. So they do a lot of great research information books also. So what I thought I would do quickly here, and we're here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. We're looking at Abtai Lung 502 colors and weathering materials. And we've looked in the past, we've looked at using things like Tamiya's panel liners and whatnot to do pin washes and so forth. I personally like these products because they're, they're weathering products. A lot of them are oil-based paints. And I like oil-based paint because it dries really slowly. And you can speed up the drying time with mediums like thinners and turps and whatnot. If you paint figures and you use oil paints, the slow drying time is a real advantage because it gives you time to go back between shadows and highlights and base colors and blend the colors together. So if you've never painted with oil paints, it's something you might want to look into if you get serious and you want to do some really great shading and, and you know detailing work. But what I thought I'd show today, just really quickly, I'm just going to show you a technique really fast, one or two techniques that use these materials. And what I'm going to do is I have a Revell 132nd scale P51 Mustang here. And people that come to the site or come to my um, Facebook events, my live events, might recognize this aircraft. We did decaling on it. We did some other things. We talked about painting. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pop this off of the stand. I like to display my aircraft on stands with the gear up and a propeller going, show them doing what they're meant to do. And what I've done is I've already done a pin wash on the bottom of this aircraft. So this is the top. And if you notice on this wing, there's no panel lining done. It's just plain silver. You know, you can see the engraved panel lines that come in the kit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and show you with the panel lining. And you can see the difference. 
You can see all the lines and I've outlined everything. And something to take note of on this is some people use a straight black wash and I think black makes things stand out too much. I think it's too stark. So what I do is I use some of these oil paints, the uh, Optilin water or oil paints, excuse me, and I mix together black and burnt umber so that it's not really harsh black. It's more of a brownish, dirty brown. And I mix it with their odorless thinner. And then I go in and I do pin washes in the panel lines. So we're gonna go from this to a really nice panel line finish like that. And I've got the materials here. And what I'll do is we're here at AAA Hobbies. If anybody has questions or comments, please feel free to leave me comments in the, the comment section and I will answer them. And I'm gonna flip this over. And the materials I'm gonna use will be two different colors from up pylon. And I've already put them into my, my jar here. So I have burnt umber, and this is an Uptilon 502 weathering color. It's burnt umber. And then I have a black. So I have burnt umber and black in the Uptilon series. And what I've done is I like to use these little plastic jars that we have in the store. And this looks weird because it's supposed to be like this with the lid up top. Well, I have it flipped over for a reason. What I do is, and I've already squirted my oil paint in here, just to save some time. You can see I have a little squirt of the burnt umber and a little squirt of the black. And it's in the inside of the lid. And there's a reason for that. What I do is, and um, I've got this odorless thinner from Tylung. I use that. That's in my little separate uh, distilling cup. You can use a glass, shot glass, you can use one of these little artist metal jars, but I put some of the thinner in there and I have my paint in the jar. The reason I put my paint in this jar lid instead of in the jar is so that when I'm working and I have to get up my wife calls me and says, come do this for the kids, I can cap this off like this and it'll stay airtight for me and I can come back later and keep working. So it's like a little airtight palette. Um, one of the tools that I use when I do this, you've got the paint, you've got the odorless thinner, and I like to use these Tamiya, or Tamiya, um, for lack of a better word, little Q-tips. They're little soft cotton tipped swabs, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. These are really handy. I use them for everything, but they come in really handy for this job right here. Um, the other, one of the other products that Uptiling makes that's really useful are their brush series. You can see I've got some of their brushes right here. So Uptilon makes the brushes as well. And what we do is we're going to take this brush. Let me think. I, I don't think I missed anything here. I have some of my other brushes here too. And always have a lot of paper towels handy. So we'll put these brushes out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this brush down a little bit. The Uptilon brush to get it soft. What I like to do when I get ready to do this, and this is for a pin wash, you're going to do a pin wash. You can do it on a tank model, you can do it on an airplane, anywhere there's panel lines. The reason I like to use these oil paints is, is that they dry slowly, which gives me time to come back and clean up the overage. In other words, I'm going to hit these lines and I'm almost going to just paint them in and there's going to be over spill on the line and I can go back with the thinner and a brush and clean it off. And it works really well because it's oil paint. And I've, I've used acrylic paint on the airplane. The oil paint doesn't interfere or react with it. So really quickly, what I do is I take my paints here, put that down. I like to use a little palette mixer that you know an artist would use. And I take a little bit of this brown, a little burnt umber, and mix it up here. Like I say, you will use a lot of paper towels. Take some black, mix it in there. So I kind of, I'm, I'm keeping them close to each other and just mixing it together. My goal is to have a, a dark wash that's not black. I want it to be a brownish, dirty brown. Because if you think about it, in reality, that's what gets in between lines on an airplane or you know raised areas. It's not black, it's like dirt, it's like a brown. So we'll get rid of this. We have our paint here, and the idea is for a pin wash using the uptie lungs is to take your brush, get it really wet, and mix it in here. I'm 
gonna let Ann get in here tight and look at this. The idea is to make this like a, a, a watery fluid. In other words, you, you're not painting on you're not painting on paint. You're just trying to get it to, to flow like water. So as you can see, I put more and more of the thinner on here and it gets more and more uh, thin or you know watery, for lack of a better word. I just keep adding more and more until I feel comfortable that it's gonna flow into the, the lines on the airplane. Now, I've got a little bit, I got a lot of oil paint on here, which it takes a little time. When you do this at home, it takes time. And as you work, you'll be thinning it more and more. So let's see, if I touch this, it's still, oh, needs a little, you can back off just a little bit there, Ann. Let me just work this. All right, I think this will work now. So as you can see, this is really, really thin compared to the paint. And a lot of times what I do is I touch my paper towel, down on this, mm -hmm. and you can see it flow. You know, it has to be very watery. So now that I've got that, I take a lot of it off, and I come over to my aircraft, and I just pick out a panel line, and we'll pick this one out right here. You getting in there? Mm-hmm. And I'll just touch it. It's this. If I get it really wet, it should flow down in there. But as you can see, I'm being fairly sloppy here. And doing this fast for our video is kind of difficult. But as you see, you can see as I clean this off, it stays in the panel line. a little too much off so I get a little more touch it along the panel line and we're doing this kind of fast I tend to like to let this set up a little bit I'll do a little bit more here Let's see. And you know what I need I need my opties. okay that's much better so if I come along here and I just touch this panel line and I paint all these different panel lines. So you can see if I go over this big area, it fills in around the edges. The idea is just to go in and paint the panel lines with the oil paint. And then come back with the Q-tip. We're getting in there. Mm -hmm. And just wipe it off along the edges. Don't wipe the panel line. Just go along the edges and clean up the excess. And you can use any tool you like. I mean, you can get, some people use brushes. Like, um, I have my spare brushes here. I can take a brush. And I can just come along and wipe it off. So the idea is to wipe off the excess and leave, leave the oil paint in the panel lines. So. I don't like to take too much time to do this here. But you get the idea. The idea is we're going to put it into these panel lines, let it set up a little bit, and then come back with a tool and wipe it off. And like I say, I tend to take a brush and I'll wet it with some thinner and come back and wipe it but the idea here is and it's tough to do this fast to show you in a quick video because I like to let this stuff set up a little bit and by the time I'm done you're gonna end up with lines like that so I just go back and I clean off all the lines so that's a pin wash using oil paint and like I say I like to use oil paints because they dry slow and I can go back with the thinner and wipe off the excess around all the panel lines so that's pin washes with oil paint Another technique that is really, um, these uh, ABT or Tylen 502 paints are good for, are filters. And people ask, well, what's a filter? A filter is basically, if you go outside and you look at your car and you notice a coating of dirt or dust on the car, it's usually all over the car. It's just not on one spot. So what you can do is, you can use oil paint or 
some of the pigments, but mostly oil paint as a filter on your model. In other words, if I take this tank and I paint it, you notice it's, it's pretty much all one shape. So what people do is they take the oil paints, and I'm gonna show you this here. This is a vehicle weathering set, an effect set, and it comes with different colors and different effects. In other words, it has uh, brown wash, it has earth color, it has a mud color, light mud, dark mud. So if you took this tube of light mud and you thin it down, super thin, like I did with the pin wash, and you take you know, a, a chisel brush or you take a wide brush and you paint it all over the side, you get it really wet. It's almost like water, tinted water with the oil paint. And you just take it and you brush it all down the sides of this. What it'll do is it will give that effect of dirt or dust all over the, the tank and it tends to blend colors together. Like if this was a camouflage tank with two different colors, when you put a filter on, it kind of blends the colors together so that it's not really stark. Um, I don't know if that makes sense or not. Also, with vehicles and buildings and things that are outside, if you watch when it rains, a lot of times water runs down different areas. It'll puddle and it'll run down certain edges and things like that. You can create those effects on a piece of armor. Armor does that. Armor sits outside and it rains on it and water runs down the sides and it creates streaking. That's what a filter is. It's taking, a lot of people call it dot filters, and what they do is they take oil paint straight out of the tube and put little dots on the tank in different colors. And then they go back and they wet a fan brush and just streak those colors down. So that's basically a filter where you're using straight oil paint to create weathering, like water that runs down, rust streaks, things of that nature. So that's about what I have today. I don't wanna you know, go too deep into it, but Optilum 502, come on down to AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. Check out our product line of Optilum 502 weathering colors. And like I say, don't be afraid of oil paints. They dry slower, they're a little harder to work with, but they give you really vibrant pigments and vibrant colors that you can't get with other paint. And figure painters in particular use oil paints um, to striking finishes on their figures because the colors are just so vibrant. So. Tylum 502, books, paints, brushes, you know, all kinds of fluids, you know, different mediums. Check them out. They're used for all kinds of plastic modeling. Come on down to AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. Check them out. Come on down, talk to me. I'll show them to you. And I guess until next Sunday, leave me, leave me comments, any questions, any suggestions for what you want to see. I'll be more than happy to talk about it. So until next Sunday, thanks for watching.